Hello, thank you all for joining us in our virtual open house event. My name is Henry Tobin and I am a volcanologist studying at Columbia University and working at the Lamont Doherty Earth Observatory. One thing we care about when we study volcanoes is how explosive they are. And one of the ways that we're able to study about how explosive they are is by thinking about the different things that drive eruptions to be more vigorous than one another. So before we get started with, our, with today's demonstrations, let me first explain a little bit about what magma is. So magma is molten rock. So it's rocks that have melted, and it's usually made up of three components. The first component is the liquid, and this is the melt. This is what we think of as having melted from the rocks. There's also solids, which are crystals that have usually crystallized from the liquid as it cools during ascent. And third, there are bubbles. And these bubbles are gases that have dissolved in the magma, usually water and carbon dioxide, which make up the majority of the, the gases present in the liquids. In order to proceed with today's demonstrations, we're gonna start by focusing just on the bubbles and the liquids and their interactions. So let's start with a more classic volcano demonstration. And so the more classic volcano demonstration that you, a lot of people have seen is a baking soda and vinegar eruption. So here I have normal baking soda, everyday baking soda that you would find. And I have some red wine vinegar. You can use any vinegar you want, but I've chosen a red wine because it's red in color, which is a little more like magma. So I've taken one tablespoon of baking soda, and now I'm going to pour a quarter cup of red wine vinegar. So I'm going to take our tablespoon of baking soda, and I'm going to put it inside of our volcanic vent. So I've got my vent here to make sure there's room in it. And let's push in all of our baking soda, making sure we get all of it in there. All right. And now I'm going to add the vinegar. And so when I add the vinegar, we get an eruption. And so what's happening here is that we have a reaction that takes place between the baking soda and the vinegar that produces carbon dioxide gas. And this carbon dioxide gas forms a foam that then erupts out. And we can see that these bubbles are producing a relatively uh, gentle eruption. It's flowing down the sides of this, this volcano very similar to what you might see at Hawaii with a basaltic lava flow. So let's visualize what happens a little bit better when we mix this vinegar with the baking soda. So to do that, I'm going to take a plastic bottle so that we can see inside what's happening. So again, let's measure out the same one tablespoon of baking soda. A generous tablespoon. Let's put it in our bottle. And now we're going to measure out another quarter cup of vinegar. So what we're going to see in this is that the foam mixture takes up much more volume than we're putting in with the baking soda and the vinegar. That's because the gas formed, the carbon dioxide, is less dense than both the, both the inputs, meaning that it has a larger volume for the same amount of mass put into the system. 
So now let's take a look at what happens when I pour in the vinegar to the baking soda. And we can see that it foams over and the bubbles allow us to visualize better what's happening as the mixture reacts and gas is formed. The gas has a much larger volume than both the vinegar and the baking soda that we put in. If we take a look, we'll see that the foam is nicely mixed between the bubbles and the baking soda, sorry, between the bubbles and the liquid. So now that we've seen what happens with the baking soda reaction, we can see that it's a relatively gentle, rea re re gentle reaction. The bubbles break relatively easily and the magma flows down the sides without too much of a vigor, without being too much of a vigorous, vigorous eruption. But what happens if we want to create a more explosive eruption? How might we do that? So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this soda water. And the soda water is normal water with carbon dioxide that has been dissolved into the water at high pressures. And we can tell that it's at high pressures because if we try and squeeze the bottle, oh, I can't compress the bottle at all. And so the reason that I can't compress the bottle is because this gas pocket at the top of the bottle is pressurized. And because it's so pressurized, it resists my force, or it resists the, my, the pressure I apply when I squeeze it. So that gas is pushing outwards and the, the bottle is trapping it. What we'll notice is that this is much higher pressure than the atmosphere around us. And if we expose, if we, open, if we were to open the bottle, we would start bubbles forming, and those bubbles would be forming because we've reduced the pressure at the top of the bottle to atmospheric pressure. And because we've reduced it to atmospheric pressure, the bubbles are going to form in order to return the system to thermodynamic equilibrium. Currently, the system is in equilibrium with the gas pocket up here at high pressures and carbon dioxide dissolved into the liquid. When we reduce that pressure, this liquid is going to be called supersaturated with, with carbon dioxide, which means that it has a too high a concentration of carbon dioxide relative to the pressure around it. And so gases will start to leave the mixture in the form of bubbles. So let's take a look. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this nail and I'm going to hammer it into the, into the cap. And as I hammer it into the cap, let's watch what happens. So not a lot is happening. There's a very faint, faint loss of gas from the nail that I put in, and a few bubbles have started to form on the surface, but not very many. So what can we do to increase the number of bubbles? You can, well, First of all, let's squeeze and see. It's still pretty rigid, and that means that this nail is actually plugging up that hole pretty well. So I'm going to gently remove this nail. Oh, so <laughs> we just had our first explosion, which occurred because the pressure in the bottle rapidly reduced when I pulled the nail out, and now we have a lot of bubbles forming. And all of these bubbles are the carbon dioxide coming out of the liquid solution and forming a gas phase. And we can see that these bubbles are forming at the bottom of the bottle on the sides where the water meets the plastic. And this is because it takes energy to make a bubble. And at the surface where the water and the plastic meet, there are microscopic imperfections in the plastic. And these microscopic imperfections in the plastic reduce the amount of energy that's required to make a bubble. As we can see right now, it's a pretty steady, constant stream of bubbles being formed because the energy of the system is relatively stable. 
But if we want to make this to become a more explosive eruption, we're going to need to add a little bit of energy to increase the rate at which we produce bubbles. And we can temporarily drive the pressure up and force it through the bottleneck and into this small hole. So to do that, I'm going to hit the bottle on the table, which will produce some energy. So what you just saw was a rapid increase in the amount of bubbles being formed for a small amount of time, which pressurizes the bottle more and drives the eruption. So I can keep doing this. And as I do it, I will reduce the concentration of gas in the bottle, which will make the subsequent eruption smaller and smaller until the soda, until the soda water goes flat. And that's just like what would happen if you were to open a soda and leave it on the counter for an hour or two and come back and try and drink it. You'd notice that it wouldn't be very fizzy. And all that means is that the concentration of carbon dioxide in the liquid has come into equilibrium with the concentration of carbon dioxide that would be in the liquid at atmospheric pressures. Okay. So the eruptions we just saw are relatively big. We might call that, that uh, a Strombolian eruption, which is like a fire fountaining eruption where you have a pulse jet of lava that goes in the air. But it's not necessarily ex a very explosive eruption. So for that, we're going to need to find some way to create even more bubbles more rapidly. So we've seen that the kinetics of nucleation, which is forming bubbles on small little imperfections in the surface of the liquid, is important for how quickly we produce bubbles. So what we're going to do is we're going to need something that adds more of these nucleation sites that has a very rough surface to the system in order to create more bubbles in a more rapid time. So for that, I'm going to take Mentos. So Mentos candies have a rough surface that's microscopically rough. You might not actually be able to see it. And that allows for nucleation of bubbles to occur. The other thing we're going to use is Diet Coke. And Diet Coke has a sugar replacement called aspartame in it. And that reduces the surface tension of the liquid which makes it easier for the liquid to produce more bubbles, it means it requires less energy to make the bubbles. So between the two, we should get a pretty vigorous eruption. I also have a soda cap, which I've punched a bunch of holes in, which will help create more pressure in the system and make the eruption even greater. So first things first, I've previously strung several Mentos onto a string and put a rock in there to weigh it down. So I am going to feed this string through this bottle cap. All right, so I've got this string through the bottle cap and I'm gonna use this to drop it in there. Um, but before I do, I'm gonna safely move all of my devices out of the way so that I don't create any problems. So I'm going to remove the cap from the soda. And we'll notice that bubbles are starting to form and creating a foam at the surface. But they're coming out at a relatively steady rate. Nothing's happening too fast. Make sure I put the cap in my pocket. Now let's feed this Mentos and rock set up into the liquid. And I'm going to tie the cap on tight so that we allow a lot of pressure to build up in this system. And on the count of three, I'm going to drop the string in there and we're going to have a reaction. So three, two, one.
And so what we did is we allowed more bubbles to nucleate in a shorter amount of time. And so that drove the pressure up really rapidly and forced all of the soda out through these holes. And so that created a more explosive eruption. So just for follow-up, because we have it, I'm going to try one last experiment involving the Mentos and normal soda water. So if you don't have Diet Coke, what you can do with soda water like this, uh, it's gotten warm, so that's why all the bubbles are trying to come out more. Come on. Ah, okay. So if you don't have Diet Coke, what you can do is use a little dish soap, which will reduce the surface tension even more. And then if you put the Mentos in, ah, <laughs> it'll fountain. <laughs> so now I'm all soapy. Uh, it's still going to go, <laughs> but... <laughs> It's definitely not as exciting as the Diet Coke version, but you probably could make this work in a, a little bit nicer way than I just have. Usually, at this point, I would demonstrate yet another, even more explosive eruption. Um, but in our current setup, working virtually, we don't have access to the materials we'd need for that. So, as we go out, we're going to be watching clips of what's called our trash can volcano. So this trash can volcano is a more destructive eruption. So it's something that you shouldn't try and do at home. All of the experiments you've seen today, you could do safely with adult supervision. But the following experiment is actually pretty dangerous if you're not a professional. <laughs> we don't know when it's gonna go. Be any time. So thank you for joining us. I look forward to seeing you next year in person. Uh, and if you have any questions, you can reach me on Twitter. I'm at WH Tobin. Um, and yes, thanks, thanks for being here. <laughs>